I will talk about electron counting in transition metal chemistry today using several examples. The first example is cisplatin. This is a anti-cancer molecule. So the compound is named diamine dichloride platinum 2. To determine the oxidation number of the transition metal, you first need to allocate the sigma bonding electrons to the ligands. Therefore, you have chlorine minus, chlorine minus, and then two neutral ammonia molecules. Therefore, the oxidation number of platinum must be two. The neutral platinum atom has 10 valence electrons. Therefore, platinum two has eight valence electrons, and they are D electrons. So we have eight D electrons surrounding this platinum two. And then there are one, two, three, four, four bonds surrounding platinum two. So you have eight plus eight. There are a total of 16 uh, electrons, valence electrons surrounding this transition metal center. So this is uh, fairly interesting. For this uh, platinum atom, the electron configuration is 6S15D9. And for uh, the neutral pla uh, palladium, atom it's actually 4d10 and then for nickel it's uh, uh, 4s2 3d8 so this is very interesting here and then a uh, easy example hexa aqua iron 2 or hexa cyanide ferrite 2 so they have actually the same number of electrons surrounding the transition metal center the formula are here uh, if you look at this one, uh, we need to uh, allocate the bonding electrons to the cyanide ligands. So each CN has a negative one charge. Overall, you have six negative charges here and plus two charge on this ion. And then overall, there's a four minus charge. And then when you have iron two, uh, it has six D electrons. And there are also um, six sigma bonds, each bond consists of two electrons, so therefore there are 12 sigma bonding electrons. Six plus 12, you get 18 electrons. Uh, the third example is a bit difficult. It's called a ferrocene. And uh, this iron is uh, sandwiched by two cyclopentadienyl anions. Uh, they are, these two are actually aromatic because you have two double bonds, that's four pi electrons. And then the fifth carbon, has a p orbital being occupied by two electrons. So this p orbital and the two double bond form conjugation with six pi electrons in total. And each cyclopentadienyl uh, anion has negative one charge. Uh, where does this negative one charge come from? This iron in the middle uh, gives one electron to each of these two cyclopentadienyl anion. Therefore, this iron in the middle has a oxidation number of two. And then that means there are six D electrons on this iron. And then plus six pi electrons from the top CP and then six pi electrons from the bottom CP. And then you have a total of 18 electrons. Uh, again, each cyclopentadienyl anion may donate uh, six pi electrons to form bonds with this iron. And um, if we look at the uh, the naming of this, it's going to be actually uh, bis eta 5 cyclopentadienyl iron 2. And then finally, another uh, example, uh, bis eta 5 cyclopentadienyl titanium with oxidation number 4 pentasulfide. So this titanium and five sulfur atoms form a six-membered six ring, and this titanium is bonded to two sulfur atoms. The formula is this, and then uh, we need to kind of somehow allocate the bonding, sigma bonding electrons to the ligands. Therefore, the two sulfur atoms that are bonded to titanium actually each has a negative one charge. And also, each cyclopentadienyl anion is aromatic, with six pi electrons and negative one charge. So that means this titanium must have plus four charges. Its oxidation number is plus four. 
And then look, each cyclopentadienyl anion donates six pi electrons to form bonds with this iron. I'm sorry, titanium. Um, sorry about this. Uh, I, I copy pasted this from the previous example. Uh, and then this titanium four contains zero d electrons, zero valence electrons. Therefore, the sum is uh, six electrons from the first cyclopentadienyl anion and six from the second cyclopentadienyl anion and then two from one sulfur another two from another sulfur you sum it up you have 16 valence electrons surrounding this titanium center